Okay, this is the last high luxury thousand right. dollar meal that we're gonna watch. This is a 50 course, seven hour long meal. What the fuck? Bro, I feel at, like at that point, at that point is seven hours long. It's a job, dude. That that becomes a burden, right? Like, there's no way, there's no way that like that level of gastronomy is is anything but like a burden. And it's really weird. What? I got the chance to visit the weirdest restaurant in the world. I'm talking about Alchemist in Copenhagen. Reservations sell out in under three seconds, and it's one of the best restaurants in the world, but I can't even really call it dinner. I mean, when's the last time you did this during dinner? It's crazy that I got to experience this, but dinner will set you back almost a thousand dollars. So I really just want to answer two questions today. What makes this the weirdest restaurant in the world? And I was gonna be clearly not supporting or watching his best friend's YouTube lol. What? Watched on Will's channel? Fuck it, dude. Let's not watch it then. My bad, bro. Will watched it. All right, fuck it. YOLO. Let's let's move on. That chatter has already watched it, dude. Sorry, guys. I I'm afraid we're not gonna be able to do that because that one 22 month subscriber decided, you know, he's already seen it. He already watched it with Will. Uh, you know, XQC already beat this game. Will already watched it. Uh, you know, Forsen reacted to it already by not saying anything, but just going, huh, in the corner, fuck it, YOLO, you know, valid, valid. Or maybe fuck yourself, and we're going to watch it now. And... Is it Bottom schlep, thank you for the five, get the subs. from the moment you walk in. These massive doors that slowly open to a black void. You're told to go into a pitch black room where all of a sudden... This is too much, this is too much, this is too much, this is too much. Copenhagen Immediately too much, okay? Like, a thousand dollars is too much, seven hours is too much. All of this is too much. I'm in it for food experiences, and I fucking love food experiences. I think it's one of the most incredible things you can do, okay? But, like, at a certain point, it, it just goes beyond. It's too gimmicky at this point, right? Like, this is for individuals that... What? Chatter was right? What? $1,000 is not too much, but seven hours is insane. Yeah, I mean, $1,000 for one person is a lot. I think it's too much, but uh, price-wise. But also, again, it's just like every part of this is, every part of this is like insane. I feel like there's decadence, and then there is like, I don't know. This goes way beyond decadence. He hasn't seen the movie. I have not seen the movie. Harmonic greets you with a Danish folk song. It was actually a little bit scary. But then the doors open and you're in their lounge with their massive wine towers and interactive drink menus waiting for the meal to begin. There were already some... Yeah, like, not to, not to hate on anybody, but, like, the astronomy and, like... Anytime I think of, like, uh, you know... Uh, what is it? Anytime I think of, like, people doing cutting-edge uh gastronomy shit or whatever am i saying that right i always think about fat duck and how it poisoned a bunch of people in england um because it's just like like food's pretty awesome okay food's great i love food it's awesome okay but I feel like it maybe maybe we're teetering on the edge of like fucking it up a little bit by 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 doing the by by doing too much work on it. You know what I mean? Fat duck is a is a uh, version of what you're experiencing here at the Alchemist, but in England, um, I, I feel like it focuses too much on a gimmick and not necessarily enough on the food and the taste of the food. Even though I do feel as though I do feel as though food is an experience that 
uh, that that you need all of your senses for. So you can definitely highlight, uh, or you can definitely uh, increase. You can elevate your experience. Uh, you can elevate your experience. That's why I was talking about like the the restaurant I went to last night, where. There certainly was a, a, a lot of components that I didn't appreciate, like how loud the music was and all this shit. You know what I mean? I feel like that can fuck up your experience a little bit. But I, I think they go basically above and beyond when you do gimmicky shit like this. Sea foam that a child laughed at. What? <laughs> what the fuck is this? ridiculous moments even before we got the food are we supposed to put a ceiling on expression no and i'm not even putting a ceiling on expression i'm certainly sim i'm i'm just simply stating that you can go above and beyond and then uh come across like gimmicky and instead of and instead of uh making it uh highlight why are you why are people so mad? Yes, I did not watch the menu. Please stop yelling at me. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. Let's just keep but going. But for this meal, I decided to let go of all expectations of what this meal could be so I could really experience everything that they had to offer. And then the food started coming out. And already I was shocked. A daisy with a center that explodes in your mouth. A drink made with rabbit ears. The thing about this restaurant is usually I can imagine it, what a dish looks like. But when you tell me that this is a dumpling and the texture of the outside is almost like cotton candy, my brain just can't process it. This is bread made yeah. from vegetable leftovers. This is what I mean. Food science gone wrong. Exactly. It's like, woo, look how wacky it is. It looks like something, but it's absolutely the opposite of what you expected. It's like, this is like the, the, the elitist version of like look at that did you think that was a knife just kidding here's a real knife i'm gonna cut through that knife it's actually a cake like that that is basically the the elite version of that this is the intellectuals like everything's a cake and you can cut it okay lol did you think that this was actually a, a fucking dumpling guess what it's cotton candy Ugh. I just want something that tastes good. You know what I mean? And I'm sure this probably does. But. Molecular gastronomy is really cool as a way to make a dish stand out. But a 50 course meal of it is an insane gimmick. Yeah. Every time I go to a bar and they have drinks with a cloche and smoke, I know it's going to be $45. No, the, the smoke, the dry ice is a, a different version of this. That is for balling on a budget, okay? That's for when you want to... That's for Instagram. When you go to a restaurant and they have so much dry ice, they put the dry ice in the whiskey, they put the dry ice in the fucking uh, apps that they're bringing in, know that that restaurant doesn't give a fuck about serving you an experience uh, that is going to be delicious and decadent. They care about you Instagramming it so that, you know, 10 other people will see that and want to go there, Okay. But this is not like that. This is a, a step beyond that. It's a different kind of gimmick. That restaurant is, uh, is, is for, you know, that restaurant is the equivalent of Andrew Tate living in Romania to do crimes because he can't do crimes in America on a budget, okay? Catch LA comes to mind immediately. This is the this is the actual Jeffrey Epstein version to Andrew Tate's version of doing sex trafficking. That they collaborated with SpaceX and NASA on. Like what? So the next impression is our attempt to make in the perfect omelet. So what we have here is a very thin skin that's made of eggs. We fill it up with a soft scramble from the eggs itself with a bit of counter cheese. And on top, we put pancetta and truffle butter. Their bikini sandwich from Spain was transformed into a mochi ball of cheese. And that Iberian looks incredible. Goodness. That is the first thing that I've seen. That and the eggs look fire, to be fair.
Yes. Oh my god. I have never had a meal like this, and going in, I felt a little intimidated. I mean, the giant doors, the pitch black room with the violinist, the space food, who wouldn't feel intimidated? But then, as the dishes started coming, I was kind of just having fun. I felt like a, a kid in a toy store, getting to play with all of these different dishes. And then we were whisked away from the lounge into their main dining room, and pff, I mean, j just, just look at it. You walk in, and there's this giant dome with beautiful visuals on it that move and change. The waitstaff is serving guests in their simple yet elegant gray outfits and everything is so precise and orderly. Honestly, if you told me that this was part of some dystopian novel or movie, I would have fully believed you. And it's funny because the first dish that we were served here was called 1984. And it's a very famous line from the book also saying the Big Oh Brother my is god, so tonight, bro, this is watching... liberalism, the experience, dude. SpaceX soy 1984 soy. Oh my fucking god, dude, stop. This is like Oh, does it get worse than this? What the fuck? Oh, this is so wackadoo. You with this eye. We are serving you a Danish potato together with a cream made out of lovage, some fresh green peas. And on top, serving you satra caviar. So from here on out, what I love about Alchemist is many of their dishes have some sort of deeper meaning. 1984 was about data privacy and you have the visuals on the dome with all the eyes watching. Bro, this is literally, I'm surprised Succession hasn't made fun of this, okay? This is so on the fucking nose, like, oh, dude, every meal actually is supposed to teach you a lesson. <laughs> what the fuck? Dude, dude, that's so fucking stupid. What the fuck? <laughs> uh, succession itself is liberal shit too. Even making fun of liberal shit is liberal shit. Everything is liberal. Yes, you can't escape liberalism. It is the dominant attitude. You, like Big Brother really is watching you. We'll wind up having dishes that are about human rights, blood donations, caged animals, and then you have dishes like this. This impression is what? called Plastic Fantastic. It is a comment on microplastics, the ones we find in our oceans and in the creatures that live in the ocean. But that wasn't their only commentary about the ocean. They had this beautifully lit- Bro, stop! Bro, this is literally- uh, yo, yo, this is literally so much. This is for liberal billionaires, dude. This is literally for liberal billionaires that go there and go, hmm, food. But the real appetite I had was for learning. <laughs> and my good sir, I've been quite satiated. <laughs> Very nice. <laughs> yeah, dude, I love I love paying a thousand dollars to be fucking lectured about microplastics. Oh my god, this restaurant is just for Leonardo DiCaprio. Actually, I would not be shocked if Leonardo DiCaprio basically made that microplastics meal. Yes. Mm -hmm. Food for thought, anyone? Yeah, very nice. <laughs> Oh, Jesus Christ, dude, this is it. This is liberalism to its very core. It doesn't get it doesn't get more hardcore than that. That's about finding more sustainable sources of seafood that we can eat and enjoy. They also had this cake that was made from the tails of king crab, which are often an underutilized part of the animal. This was a menu that really made you think. If you told me that I would be going into this meal and learning about the world. Yeah, this is the European version of that dinner where those white women were told their races. Yeah, the Syrah Rayo uh, meal that white wine moms uh, go to to get yelled at about racism and how racist they are. This is the, this is the European version, yes. Hmm, food that makes you think very nice. Well, I would have thought that you were crazy. But when you're eating a dish that looks and feels like plastic and you're looking at the visuals on the dome of a turtle trapped in some plastic itself, you really start to feel something. But not all the dishes <laughs> had some-
<laughs> you really start to feel something, dude. Oh. Oh, I didn't realize it was going to get worse. I thought, like, I thought how gaudy and gimmicky it is was going to be enough for me. This makes it so much better that it's also, like, incredibly liberal. <laughs> yeah, you start feeling hungry, and you say, I paid $1,000 for this. Where's the rest of the fucking food? Paid $1,000 to eat a grocery bag? That's what makes the rich feel emotions. <laughs> some sort of societal meaning. Some of them were just fun. Ross was get the inspiration of his favorite food, beautiful lobster roll. You just make a mold from a real lobster claw, fill it up with the meat parts, freeze it down, dip it in vodka, and deep fry it. After this is when things start to get creepy. Like, that really creepy. I'm an adventurous eater, but even I started to have my limits tested by some of these dishes. What? What? Bro, 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 bro. You can't skip. You need to explain them. You need to explain them. I I, I don't want to skip here. Bro, you spent like, you spent four minutes on the 1984 meal, dude. Come on. What the fuck? I know. I want to know what this shit is. Bro. There was a moment where I overheard the guy next to me saying that he would not eat this dish no matter what. So I literally had to turn to him and convince him to at least try the dish, you know? Alchemist is not just about the fun and freewheeling dishes, it's also got some dishes that will make you uneasy. But when the waitstaff came and explained what the dishes were made of and what they represented, it sort of eased a lot of that fear. This is the lungs of the lamb, which is very much a kind of taboo uh, part of the animal, even by awful standards. Here we've made them into almost like a pate or like a cream. We're eating lungs right now. Wait, why is it? I didn't know that. Mm. Does it taste good? Are you not supposed to eat the lungs of a lamb? Why not? Bro, he's having lung Oreos. Yeah. Wait, 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 wait. I, I don't know why you can't eat the... If you eat lamb anyway, why not the lung? Who cares? Yeah. Taste bad, sponge. <laughs> They're smokers. Oğlum, biz burada kuzu ciğeri yiyoruz. Abi, akciğer yemiyoruz ama biz karaciğerini yiyoruz, abicim. Akciğeri bu galiba. Ne, anlamadın herhalde. <gülüyor> Oğlum biz burada kuzu ciğeri yiyoruz lan. Abi. <gülüyor> Dude in the hood is Turkish. So in Turkey, the word for lung and liver is the same word. We just call the uh, the liver black lung and we call the uh lung just white lung right so he's like confused by this and he's saying like no 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 we eat this we eat this i'm like no we only eat they're saying lung yes bro they're not saying fucking gr kafanda sen onu translate ettin lung is considered awful so it's taboo in some cultures yeah, I don't really understand why uh, you would make a distinguish uh, like you. I know they have them. Evet, biliyorum ben de arada yapıyorum böyle sıkıntı var yani. Um, you can't eat it because you can get sick from eating the lungs. Yeah. Yo, akciğer diyoruz. Yo muyuz abi? Ben hiç akciğer yemedim herhalde. Tahmin etmiyorum. Yeniyor doğuda. Really, really delicious, actually. That's amazing. Here you're getting the impression, which is called food for thoughts. You're getting served here the lamb brain. It comes on top of a deep fried brioche bowl, which is filled with foie gras and a little bit more thinning. What are we eating? Lamb brain. This is what we're eating. Lamb brain. Mmm. Oh my god. So with lungs and brain on the menu, we might as well have had the tongue as well. They didn't. Okay, but like. Like, the tongue is not a weird thing to eat. Very, that's not, I don't know what fucking animal's tongue that is. But it's, it's definitely, literally the size of a human tongue, which is deliberate, which makes it really weird. Um, people eat, people eat tongue all the time. It's not my favorite. Uh, I'll, I'll admit it. I'm not a big fan of, 
I'm not a big fan of, of tongue, but it is very normal to eat. I didn't explicitly state that it was a replica of the chef's tongue, but I feel like it was implied, so I had to give the chef a French kiss. This section of the dishes was just insane and is what made Alchemist so weird and beautiful and amazing. I mean, the act of literally freeing a caged chicken in order to enjoy your dish, while images of tons of caged birds are all around you, is actually quite powerful. Look at this uh, chicken leg. We freed it Bro, these are, you know what's surprising about this? Almost all of these are the cheapest cuts. Like, every single thing that they've served thus far, with the exception of, like, foie gras or whatever, or, like, caviar, these are literally the cheapest cuts of the fucking animal. What is happening? Even the crab. They're serving you the cheapest cuts of an animal. They probably whip it up so well that, like, it, it's probably delicious. But it's not $1,000 well, you know what I mean? I guess the the unique component of it is that like they have made the cheapest parts of an animal the most uh you know delicious thing but it's so gimmicky Think about the ethics of food we eat we also eat foie we also eat this foie gras yeah like <sighs> modern art but for food cheap but over explained yeah it's just like it it is it's so odd, man. Like, obviously, there's a lot of preparation and maybe even, like, thousands of years of tradition that go into food that I really appreciate. And I appreciate the journey it takes you on. But this is, like, good food is supposed to be standalone. You know what I mean? When you eat, when you eat a Wagyu cut, an A5 Wagyu cut, the story it's telling you, is inside of your mouth, okay? It doesn't have to hit you in the head. The story it tells you is, is how buttery it is, how well marbled it is, and how easily it melts in your fucking mouth. The fact that you don't have to put any sauce on it, the fact that you're supposed to just sprinkle a little bit of sea salt on top of it. That is speaking on its own, okay? It, stand, it stands on its own legs. This, on the other hand, is just like hammering you in the fucking head or the bone marrow that's another good one exactly the this on the other hand is not just like standing on the standing on the legs of the food itself but then fucking like tells you uh is just like bullying you with uh all of this uh information calm down man it's just food first of all no no such thing Commentary on the cheap cuts is that a lot of cheap cuts go to waste, even though they have a lot of value items of flavor. But this point is so overplayed, like a modern culinary context for a cutting edge restaurant like Alchemist to be doing this in 2023 is fucking hilarious. Also, what I've heard about Alchemist is the food isn't even that good. It's trying way too hard. Yeah, this is the Ben Garrison comic of food. Exactly. They think you're too stupid to get it. So you need a full room projector of depressed chickens or whatever to make sure you get the idea. Yeah. It is the Ben Garrison cartoon of food. It's like writing, you know, this is Donald Trump. This is Hillary Clinton. Like, I don't need that shit. Just give me the fucking food, dog. Oh, most people are too stupid to get it. Yeah, it doesn't matter. You don't need to get it. In the cage, now we have to eat it. I used to think that fine dining was stuffy, formal. It was a bunch of people in suits and ties and white tablecloths on the table. But what I realized, especially for me, is I just love seeing how far food can go, how it can be creative and innovative and be more than just about taste, how it can really potentially inspire. And seemingly simple dishes like this light and air. You get it, but then you said you need the creator to explain the food, Lamont. Bitch, what do you mean? Yeah, of course I need to understand what the fuck's going on. He just like, b me sitting there and eating the food is a little bit different than me looking at a, a, a three second snapshot of what the fuck that was. Airy bread topped with Iberian ham or this fluffy. Also, I don't think you understand something here. What you don't understand is that it should be standalone. Okay. It should basically, 
rest on the laurels of its taste and the journey that it takes you on. You don't need a fucking lecture on the side with your food. Unless it's about, unless when they, you know, come and show you the cuts or whatever, and then they tell you the preparation and whatnot. bow that almost looks like it came out of Squid Game can be so interesting and unique. Now, desserts were my favorite part of the meal, but there was one part that actually shocked me. I had never seen this in a restaurant before. It's this room that's blindingly pink. It's an interactive dish. I mean, I just, I really don't know how to explain it. Welcome. I will be guiding you through this experience. Please wipe your hands with the napkin in front of you. Please throw your napkin on the floor. Carefully grip the cup with one hand. Insert your index finger into... Oh, the hell By the way, no. yes, we are still eating a fine dining meal. <laughs> Run your finger along the inside of the cup. Oh, hell, dude. It's like that fucking video where they, like, dump chocolate in front of you and you're supposed to eat it with your hands. Oh, hell no. This is, yeah, this is the Ron DeSantis one finger bang, dude. What the fuck? Get out of here. Lick your finger. Now. Um, yeah, I don't even know. It's like, it, it's reminding you of a simpler time. When you were a child, what has happened in modernity is that we've lost touch with our childish creativity when all of the wonderful joys of a pudding cup could be better than anything else you can consume. It's pussy. The whole room was pussy. Know how to describe what just happened. Shall we move on to desserts? It's uh, the iconic Andy Warhol banana. This is uh, a piece of art that actually does hang in Rasmus's kitchen, but it also depicts the art that Andy Warhol did for another one of Rasmus's inspirations, which is the Velvet Underground. Blood donation is very, very close to a lot of Dane's hearts. Right now, there's a pretty serious national blood shortage, so they're kind of constantly doing. Dude, I hate this so much. This is the worst restaurant of all time. This shit is so corny, dude. Yo! Yo! This is the corniest fucking thing of all time. I've never seen no corn cornball shit like this. And call outs for people to uh, to donate blood if they're able. But we also know that lots of our guests don't come from Denmark. It's not super relevant to only talk about the local blood shortage. Uh, so we built the QR code at the bottom of the plate. It launches uh, a website that we designed to kind of get guests connected to blood banks that are closest to them. To finish off the meal, we had this chocolate bar because ending on blood isn't the best. This chocolate bar has facts about child labor and the chocolate trade and how inhumane some chocolate can be. It's in a biodegradable wrapper and the bar itself is in the shape of a grave to really highlight that point. It's powerful stuff. We had a final few bites like these wood ants inside of amber, but the Dude. seven hours really flew by. I honestly can't even believe that we were there for that long so is it worth wait, it wait did he eat that wait you're supposed to eat that wait hold on hours really flew by i honestly can't wait what the fuck amber and ants are fire wood ants and amber Bro, my Jolly Rancher fell. Yeah. When your Jolly Rancher falls on the ground, it falls out of your mouth and you put it back in. <laughs> Brother, if you're paying $1,000 for a meal like this, with the exception of this YouTuber, your contributions to the child slave labor is probably, like the likelihood that you have contributed, not as a consumer, but as like a, a, uh, a commodity producer, Two child labor is like infinitely more likely, okay? <laughs> oh, this is awesome. I'm going to watch the menu after this. That's what this made me want to do. This is the most pretentious shit I've ever seen, dude. 
can't even believe that we were there for that long. So is it worth it? Well, the short answer for me is Value yes. doesn't come from capital. Okay, shut up. You know what I mean. I've ever had in my entire life. I see it kind of like getting VIP tickets to your favorite artist's concert or <laughs> This gum has been chewed by an actual member of America's poverty stricken working class. So powerful. Put the gum in your mouth and think about the labor conditions. <laughs> <laughs> this is actually analogous to how the daily tumultuous workplace spits and chews out the working class. Here's a rat. Just a rat. It's still alive. You're supposed to bite its head off. Why? To indicate the daily rat race. <laughs> oh, it's so good. Yeah, dude, this is awesome getting tickets to the World Cup. It's a once-in-a-lifetime experience, but it's something that you should experience once in your life. Yeah, it ended on a positive note after... after blood donations. It ended on a positive note by teaching us about child slave labor. Wow. That, I mean, the video is great. Uh, this guy, I'm glad he did this. But... that... I mean, if this was supposed to be like, oh, wow, I really want to fucking have this food. It made me feel like I never want to go there. Caviar is one of the most expensive foods in the world. Selling for up to $35,000 per kilo, it's revered and relished by aristocrats around the globe. But... It's an acquired taste. Why? No, it's not. I am literally a fucking food peasant when it comes to seafood. It is certainly not an acquired taste at all. It's not. Like I've said time and time again, it's just squishy salt. That's, it's literally boba, like micro boba, but salty. That's it. It's the rich person's salt. That's it. It is not an acquired taste at all. It's a bit creamy. If it if it's, you know, an acquired